Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And our guest today graduated from the University of Notre Dame with a bachelor's in electrical engineering and worked eight years in the avionics industry before a series of dreams, visions, and coincidences motivated her to pursue her spiritual calling. She is now a very popular author, spiritual instructor, angel communicator, and modern mystic. Meet Anne Albers, who has done readings for over two decades. She has books and audios and even an internet television show called Anne and the Angels. And there's so much more to this wonderful woman, but I'd like her to tell it in her own story. Anne Albers, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thank you so much for having me as a guest. This is one of the topics near and dear to my heart. Aww. Because my reality has been completely changed and enlivened and inspired by knowing that we don't die, yes. by knowing that our loved ones are with us all the time. It's um, transformed my life. Oh, well, we'd love to hear your story because it sounds like it came from a pretty interesting background. And <laughs> it, it's, it's, I love hearing the stories when people uh, make the leap from kind of mainstream uh, analytical jobs to then the world of, you know, the spiritual. So could you just tell us a little bit about your background, maybe where you grew up? And, uh, sure. Yeah. Your story. I grew up in Virginia, Northern Virginia, near Washington, D.C., and my dad is a physicist who still travels the world and studies cold fusion and all those things that, you know, are a little beyond my understanding. Yes. My mom did a variety of different jobs, all pretty, you know, well-based in intellectual pursuits, and I grew up in a traditional religious background. So, as you can imagine, it was expected that I'd go to college, get some sort of intellectual job, get married, have two kids, you know, <laughs> you know the whole, the whole thing. Right. And I tried to do that. And I got a great job in avionics. I graduated with an engineering degree, but the thing was I didn't love it. And I saw, you know, the traditional wonderful, I call them the wonder geeks, you know, around me who just loved what they were doing, and I didn't. So I started praying because that was my background, and I said, you know, God, whoever, whatever you are, there's got to be something, you know, you want me to do that will give me joy. And I started having very vivid dreams uh, that, caused me to do spiritual growth and look inside of myself and start asking, you know, what do I really want? Who am I really? Not just what am I programmed to be, but who am I? And then teachers appeared. Books literally fell off the shelf. I was in a bookstore once and I was covertly looking at this teeny tiny section on angels because, you know, years ago it wasn't cool. Now everybody talks about it. Yes. And I, I didn't want any of my intellectual friends to see me doing it. So <laughs> I'm sneaking around looking at the angel books. And I literally heard in my head, buy that book. And I thought, no, I've got enough books at home. I don't need another one. And I turned around and I tripped. And I went flailing and grabbed anything that I could grab. And it ends up I grabbed the angel book. And it flipped open to a page that said, you can ask the angels for help with your career and finances. Wow. <laughs> do, 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 you know, That's Twilight crazy, Zone. but great, yes. Yeah. So it just kept going on and on. I took the book home. I read the book. I did the meditations. I was completely disappointed because the only thing that happened was I got peaceful. And I was a type A engineer, so that should have been a major victory, you know, but it wasn't enough. I wanted more. But soon after that, coincidences started happening. I would tell somebody, you know, I wonder if this past life thing is real or not. And the printer repair man comes by and drops off a flyer on my desk, which is a workshop for past life aggressions. <laughs> And I, you know, and I looked at him, I said, you don't know me. How did you conclude that I might be interested in that? And he goes, I don't know, you just looked like it. Mm. I mean, you know, just crazy coincidences like that. And it was like following a trail of breadcrumbs where I met one of my first teachers who taught me to silence my mind and connect with my angels. And it just kept going on and on until one day I was in the lab at Honeywell where I worked and I heard literally voices outside my head say turn in your resignation tomorrow and mind you i had been praying for years to know when to quit mm -hmm. and so I kind of looked around and I heard it again and I went home and I looked in my bank account I had been working um, 90 hour weeks because that's what was mandated at the time wow. and I had tossed into my savings account all the overtime money well it ends up I had exactly a hundred dollars more that night than I said I would have to have if I quit interesting so Shaking and quaking, I turned in my resignation the next day, gave six weeks' notice, and 
I just kept getting guided. I got guided to seminars, you know, where I learned, uh, you know, native traditions about going into the dream space and connecting with angels. And uh, about a year later, you know, I was scared stiff. Someone called me up and said, there's a bookstore who needs an intuitive reader. And I told them you were going to come interview and that's it. <laughs> so I was thrown right in and I, I went, you know, scared again. I was scared the whole time. And the only thing I remember from that session was I thought, you know, there's a reason for this. God put me in front of this person. Let me please be helpful at least. Yes. And I must have said something that worked because I got the job on the spot. And I was still just in my mind talking to angels at that point. Well, I was in the middle of one session with a person who had walked into the bookstore when all of a sudden this older lady appeared in my head and she said, tell that young lady across from you that I am so grateful she snuck me bonbons in the nursing home. Wow. <laughs> you know, those little chocolates. Yes. So I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, am I talking to dead people? You know, <laughs> just What's totally happening? Freak out. But I told her, and she starts crying, and the woman said, I did. I snuck her treats all the time, and that was her favorite. And we're both crying. So and sweet. And I just happened, yeah, I just happened to be working alongside of a medium, Cheryl Booth at the time, who had studied in the same circles as James Van Prague, you know, another famous medium. Mm -hmm. And so Cheryl gave me some wonderful tips, and over time, you know, I, I learned to tune in. So it's been a journey. <laughs> yes. And now it's an everyday occurrence that somebody's talking to me. Or, you know, I mentioned before we talked on the show, right before you called, you know, a dear client of mine wrote that she had lost her dog. So I checked in, there's her dog in spirit running around all happy. Oh, tell us about yeah. that, because pets are so near and dear yeah. to all of our hearts, uh, with the, uh, well, their unconditional love. Yeah, yeah. what do you know? I, I, okay, well, I think everyone who's ever had an animal understands that they have a soul, that they're an individual, and that when they pass, just like us, they transition, they go into the light, they're in their spirit form. The difference between animals and us is they don't have any issues around being on the other side they don't look back and say oh poor me and they don't dwell on the way they crossed over you know i've even talked to dogs who have drowned or you know something pretty traumatic and they're like oh it's done it's over you know they don't hold on to it and instead they're more like i feel better let's play when i had to put my dog down i actually let my dogs tell me when they were ready which nearly killed me because they course. stayed way longer you know than than was um easy yes so anyhow when one of them transitioned, I actually felt his spirit come up through my body, and then it was like, woohoo, let's go home. He felt wonderful again. I'm crying, of course, because I missed him. Uh, yes. So we get in the car to go home. I laid down because I was exhausted, and I felt this huge warmth next to me, and I felt him snuggling next to me. And there he was in spirit, just completely relieved to be out of a body that didn't work, 100% happy to be, you know, feeling like himself again, and thinking nothing was wrong with this picture. And it was just beautiful to have that, that love and that connection. And one thing I didn't know till my own dogs died, they came back and told me, one day they showed up and, and he telepathically says to me, why aren't you petting me these days? And I said, well, you're in spirit. He says, shut your eyes and imagine you're petting me and I'm going to feel it. I said, are you kidding? No. So they... If you have an animal that's passed, shut your eyes, imagine them, pet them. You know, my, my Labrador showed up and she <laughs> says to me, why aren't you feeding me popcorn? So in my imagination, I threw her popcorn and I saw her going crazy the way she used to go on earth. And, you know, these are things I didn't know until my own animals passed. I've not heard that before. And it yeah. sounds fantastic because love never dies. And if they're just yeah. invisible in a different plane of mm -hmm. existence but can be right next to us, why not? Well, and the thing is, when you're imagining petting them, that's an energetic act. It's not a physical act, but it's an energetic act. And they told me that they can perceive those things as if it was real. You know, it's just, um, and again, that was new to me. But I, I thought, okay, you're telling me this, so I'll do it. And there they are wriggling and happy. And the funny part is sometimes I do readings for other psychics. And I had one lady come in my office that is a, a pet psychic. And she says, who's the Labrador running around your living room going crazy? And I said, well, that's Lucy. You know, that's my, my, my so-called dead dog. I, I can barely say the word dead without, you know, it doesn't mean anything anymore because they're just in spirit. Yes. Yeah, I can still imagine 
petting my cat Millie and rubbing her behind her ears and feeling yeah, her little skull it. and her tail and she liked her bum oh, scratched. Right. You know, the bum would go way up in the air. Right. She makes <laughs> cute faces when you do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, and I can't help but think how healing that would be for us too. It, well, it, it helped me heal because, I mean, even though I'm, you know, I talk to everybody when it's your own, you know, dog or your own person, it's it's still, um, you miss them. And it was such a great comfort. And then it got even funnier because within days after uh, my Husky Wolf died, I started seeing license plates all over, canine taxi, dog lover, you know, <laughs> everywhere. Yes. And then my Labrador loved cheese, so I'd get stuck behind a car that says, love CHS, you know, love cheese. <laughs> Just... They would give me signs, and your human loved ones will do that too. Sometimes that you'll you'll you know they'll pass, and you'll you'll see signs. I mean, people report birds looking in their window, you know, or or um, blinking lights. I've had uh, people tell me their you know kid's toy goes off in the middle of the night, saying Elmo loves you, you know, only after their mother died. You know, just um, crazy stuff happens. My grandpa, when he passed, started. We had. We had different phones back then. It wasn't the iPhone. It was, you know, regular phones that rang. The phone started chirping. It would just go, Pop! and I'd pick it up. Nobody would be on the line, and I'd hang it up, and then it'd say, Grandpa, Pop! you know. So some of them are good electricians, and others are not as great at the signs. So if your loved one does not give you signs, it doesn't mean they don't love you. It doesn't mean they're not there. They might just not have that technical kind of mind that does this sort of thing. Hmm. I want to ask you about this because this is, came up yesterday uh, okay. when I was talking. Is There's been people that, you know, it sounds great that our loved ones are around, but people that have never gotten a sign, you know, do you yeah, have yeah, I, well, I, I, yeah. any advice? I do because, um, for example, my grandpa gives me signs, but I have a lot of other relatives in spirit that don't. And of all crazy things being a medium, it's like, come on, you guys, you know. But, for example, my grandmothers are not good at that sort of thing. So, the angels gave me a technique for people that it might seem too simple, but over time, if you persist, you can build a bridge between yourself and your loved one. And it's as simple as taking a few minutes, at least once a week, or maybe every day if you really miss them, just a few minutes, and you, you give them a time because you want to kind of make a little commitment there, like, you know, 8 p.m. or whatever, and you just sit in a chair and you say, okay, I'm open to feeling you. I'm open to receiving a hug from you. And you just start getting in tune with your body and feeling whatever you feel. You might feel tingles. You might feel your heart palpitate a little stronger. You might feel a little warmth or a little static electricity. And you might feel nothing. But whatever you feel, you give them feedback. And you say, okay, today I don't feel anything. Or today I think I felt a little tingle on my left elbow or whatever it is. And then you do it again, and you do it again, and you keep repeating this over time because they're going to be with you, but they have to learn how to adjust their energy field so that you can feel them. And when you give them feedback, it helps them know, you know, kind of, am I getting close? Am I, am I finding an energy frequency that you can perceive? For example, when my grandpa died, you know, he did all those cute little signs, but I would sit and I'd sit and I'd, no, I don't feel anything yet and I don't feel anything yet. And then one day I felt a little warmth on my right hand and I told him that and then the next time it got a little warmer and a little warmer. And now uh, every time I sit still, and in fact, he's doing it now, he holds my right hand and I feel warmth on it. So it can take time and you have to be patient and it's not your job to stretch and make anything happen. It's just your job to sit quietly, give them feedback and then repeat it until eventually something happens. And once you reach that point where you're really convinced that they're with you, then you might start getting thoughts popping in your head or pictures popping in your mind when you ask a question. And that's beginning to communicate with them. So, for example, you could say, is that really you? If it is, you know, you know put something in my head and you might hear a joke. I would say, <laughs> do you mind a story? Love stories. Okay. I'll tell this story because it's just way too humorous. I was at lunch with a friend of mine um, who has written comedy in the past, and we were joking and laughing, and he made some really you know, corny jokes. You know, we mm -hmm. call them kindergarten jokes, really corny. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing corny jokes in my head, different ones. And I said, you're going to not believe this. There's a spirit in my head telling crazy jokes. So I repeated the joke, and we're laughing. And at the same time, he says, I bet that's my, and I'm like, it's your, and we both go father at the same time, because <laughs> mm. his dad used to tell jokes like that, and then we started getting more, you know, 
personal information. Um, and basically, I spent most of the lunch with my eyes closed. So <laughs> it was fun. But spirits have a wonderful sense of humor, and they do communicate first by energy. Okay. Then you might get little thoughts or feelings. Eventually, you might get pictures. Some people get dreams. Now, everyone wants their loved one to visit them vividly in a dream. And uh, believe me, I'd like that too. But honestly, most of mine have not. It's just not their specialty. Okay. You know, just as some people are good at focusing, some people are good at music, some people are good at showing up in different energetic realms. It's kind of like their tuner, you know, on the TV figures out how to tune just right to show up in your dream. Now, some of them just don't have that ability for whatever reason or they haven't tried. That doesn't mean they don't love you. Sometimes instead, when you lose someone, you'll find that instead of having vivid dreams, you go into very, very, very deep states of sleep and you wake up and you feel like, where am I? What was I doing? You know, you can't quite yes. get your eyes open. Those are times when you've actually been really far out of body in your sleep and you've probably been visiting your loved one, but you just don't remember it. And the reason is, if we remembered how beautiful heaven is, some of us would not come back and wake up the next morning. Mm -hmm. And... um so there are some built-in safety nets, you know, that keep you in the body for as long as you're supposed to be here. This is all good news because, we, like I said, I was just talking about this last night, and I didn't really know what kind of advice to give other than to start a practice and, and talk to your loved one. And you just filled in everything that was missing to give feedback well, and uh, set a time. Yeah. I like this method because, you know, a lot of people out there, when you lose someone, Maybe this is your first introduction to the other side or, you know, you, you haven't meditated for years and, you know, maybe you don't have time to develop all those skills that some people have. Right. But a anyone can just sit and give feedback. And, and I advise people set a microwave timer or the phone timer and just do it for a minute or two. Don't frustrate yourself because if, if you don't feel them within a minute or two, they haven't figured it out yet. And... You know, you could easily get frustrated. Well, I'm not feeling anything. Well, just, just give it a minute or two, and that's it for that day. And then you try again the next, or, mm -hmm. or you just keep doing it. And it really is persistence that pays off on both, you know, the side of the human being. And the spirit will persist because they love you. Yeah, I think we. it's very easy to think once they transition to the other side, the afterlife, that they're the be-all, end-all, and can do anything and have all the answers. But we're And that's not true. Yeah. No, we're still us, correct? We are still us. Now, many people have a much, much greater understanding of mm -hmm. what reality is about. I mean, when you go into that light, you start understanding that I'm not just an individual, but I'm part of everything. As much in my metaphor is that a wave is an individual wave, and yet it's never, ever disconnected from the ocean. It can't be. Yes. You know, the, the ocean sources that wave. The ocean gives it life, and someday that wave will sink back into the ocean, but... Mm -hmm. If it were a person, it still maintains all the memories of who it is, what it is, where it's traveled, what it's done. And so we don't lose our individuality and we still look like people. You know, that wave is just a metaphor. But we understand that we're connected to something much greater than us. So there's greater understanding, but that still doesn't mean they know all the party tricks. You know, like yes. how to show up in your house and how to blink lights. And some spirits are just better at that than others. Yeah, I love this, though, building that relationship across the bridge there, this invisible bridge, and just giving feedback, setting a time, because that's something we can do as opposed it's to just easy. sitting around and waiting and praying for some magical sign to show up. The yeah, feedback. and uh, for, uh, well, I, I have a client, for example, whose wife died, and it was, you know, he loved her so dearly, he had harp, he had a harpist playing at her death. Wow. I mean, you know, I'm going to cry just thinking about yes, it. Yes, it's um, beautiful. It such a beautiful love. And he did this technique, and he really persisted, and it was several months. But over time, they've built such a strong relationship that it's, it's as if they're inseparable. He can feel her presence at any time he wants. She has guided him into um, following hobbies that he didn't even know he was interested in, meeting new people. You know, in, in a way, his life is very rich. He still misses her physical presence, of course. But he's got so much more love in his life, and he's got, you know, amazing, um, well, well, he plays a musical instrument that he never thought he'd play, you know, just meeting people through that. And it's, his life has become enriched in, in miraculous ways because of this relationship that he persisted in pursuing across the veil. And it, it does take time and patience. 
But how but healing it, for it, along with his, you know, having his grief to even yeah. though he can't see her or touch her, um, I, I really believe having a faith in the afterlife that your loved one is around, it does help. It, it really does help. It doesn't take away all the grief, but, I mean, it really yeah. does help. And, to give and even him, if you don't believe, yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can try this and just kind of say, okay, I'm going to reserve judgment. I'm not going to believe, but maybe I'll just say I don't, I'm not going to push away the possibility. Yeah, I like that. You know, you open your mind just a crack to, to make room for the possibility of it, mm-hmm. and you look at it as an experiment, and I'm going to give it six months, and I'll do this for six months. If I don't feel anything, well, okay, then, you know, maybe you can hang on to your old beliefs, but usually by that time you have something that shows up if you're willing to just open your mind a crack. Mm-hmm. And give feedback I mean, when the signs come, yeah. right? Even with, um, uh, you know, I saw the license plate with your name on it, or whatever that may be, or your favorite number was... No, one two three and all of a sudden i'm saying one two three is everywhere you know everywhere yeah <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. oh this is really good advice excellent now well, we all have this part in our mind though and that says oh it can't possibly be true that's my imagination do you have any thoughts on that ego mind that we have uh how to deal with yes, that because i mean i thought i was crazy when i started you know mm-hmm. <laughs> to be honest with you i was sitting there doing readings because i got shoved out in public by my teacher terrified you know, this can't be real. I'll, I'll, I'll share an example. In in one reading, for example, I, I saw, you know, a lady's mother was talking to me, and, and she sh- kept showing me a picture of a pink grapefruit half in a china teacup. And, I mean, that's Strange. weird, okay? It's yeah. just weird. And so I've learned over the years, it's like, just say it, just say it. So I said it, and the lady burst into tears, and she said, that's what my mom had for breakfast every morning. Oh. You know, things like that. Now, say you're not in front of a medium and all of a sudden you keep seeing the same numbers over and over well yeah you can chalk it up to coincidence or you can go to you know Doreen Virtue's website I think it's called angeltherapy.com and look up the number and see what it means yes you know, she has a free free number thing there and where you can look up numbers so you can just keep your mind open a crack what I started doing at the beginning when I thought I was half crazy I wanted to believe you know I'll be honest I really wanted to believe I was doing exercises in these books but I wasn't sure because I was an anal retentive engineer who grew up with a strict Catholic background. Yes. <laughs> you, know, you can sure. imagine, I had, I had, in the scientific paradigm, raised by a physicist. So everything, you know, everything that came out of my mouth in childhood was, well, you can't prove that. How can you prove that? You know, and it's just because that's the paradigm I grew up in. So what I did is I just kept a journal of all the weird stuff that happened and the coincidences that happened. And over time, reading it in retrospect, I had to admit something was going on be. be Besides sheer coincidence. Yes. You know, what are the odds that my dog dies and the very next day I go hiking to soothe myself? And mind you, I had told my dog, when you die, you can go hiking with me again. And we run into the first dog on the trail where we run into has his name. Hmm. And it was a different, it was Bruno. It's not a t- terribly common name here. So anyhow, again, coincidence, maybe, but the universe deals in coincidences. And it really is a vibrational reality where we start to attract what we love and so you love your your person in spirit and they love you and so they want to give you signs and it makes it very easy for them to orchestrate these synchronicities oh this is all so good and just what we need to hear for our listener right now ann and i are recording this just prior to christmas and you may be listening to it you know 20 years in the future and a different month and that's okay but i think in this time that the holiday season is approaching and and it is really tough coming from somebody and you as well who've lost some loved ones. Not really lost because they're still around, but they're no longer in the flesh. But it, it gets to be tough, you know. Um, all the past yeah. memories come flooding. And to be able to now say, yeah, you know what, my goal this you know instead of having a new year's resolution to lose weight or something let's start the resolution right now to weekly or twice a week or whatever it is uh take that minute or two to connect i think that's beautiful yeah it really it really does help because like i said even the skeptic even somebody who has no experience with the other realms whatsoever can do that they can sit in a chair and pay attention to their body and just give feedback and it may be i don't feel anything yet for Mm -hmm. a while so just I don't want to set people up for unrealistic expectations. I want you to know it might take time. But every now and then I get someone who has, you know, this wild experience right away. So, I, you know, the minute I say something, there's some other condition. Anyhow, yeah, yeah just practice. Just practice. Give, give it a shot. 
that's, yeah. that's what I tell people because um, I thought of something too. Whether you, whether you yeah, whether you believe it or not, it's a good idea to open your mind to the possibility. Mm. Well, and so much of that comes out of our own minds is trash, anyways. I mean, we would never let anybody else talk to us somehow. Sometimes, like how we talk to our own selves, you know that negative voice that's in our head so it doesn't mean that our thoughts are always correct we can be really rough on ourselves but what I wanted to say was um, I've been doing some different kinds of experimentations on my own in afterlife communications but I just had this idea based on what you're saying we could also couldn't we experiment with well let me watch a funny movie and feel really good and then do the experiment see if we could change our own energy up a little bit you know or or if I am Absolutely. sad, you know, does that make a difference? If I feel good or, you know, because I, I can't help but think the better we feel, it, it uh, raises our vibration. And, and it's tough, yes, if you're grieving, you know, it may not be easy to just laugh. But, you know, maybe just to think of something you're grateful for. And that might raise yeah. the vibration a little. Absolutely, because, you know, we go back to the radio analogy. It's like they're on this real happy station and we're on this real sad station and we're trying to meet in the middle. Yes. You know, we're trying we're trying to find, you know, those of you who remember dials on radios, we're trying to dial <laughs> into the station. You know? Yes. <laughs> um, and you know what else helps is they often advise go get every happy photo you can you can find from your loved one or get a, get a bunch of them and make an album or or make, you know, something on your computer and and keep looking at those happy photos so that you can focus on the good times you had instead of focusing on what you lost or focusing on them being sick or you know, they prefer that we focus on all the, the, the positive, happy memories. Mm-hmm. I like now, that's it. easy with somebody that you had a good time with. There are cases where there's been, you know, just a lot of pain because maybe somebody got real cranky or nasty at the end. I see that a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, there are people that don't like aging and they unfortunately turn into someone else at the end. And you can pretty much rest assured that by the time they get to the other side, they are back into a loving space. And they're not holding any grudges. And even if they were cranky and you couldn't do enough for them, you know, when they were 90 in their hospital room, they get to the other side and they're almost always they're like, oh, I'm sorry I was that way. I'm really sorry. You know, they they, they don't like to see that they've hurt their loved ones. So I've never, ever once heard anyone on the other side in 20 years say you weren't good enough. Ever. Most of the time they're apologizing for making it hard on their loved ones down here. Yes. Sometimes they're laughing about it. Every now and then you get a character that's like, wow, I turned into a doozy, didn't I? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but they, they, just, they just don't hold grudges in heaven. Well, which means that we can still, if there was so many people um, die, pass away, whatever, with undelivered communications and leave, you know, there's mm-hmm. mothers or sons not talking to mothers and things like that. But right. y- and so then we can have guilt that mom's gone now and I never got to say I'm sorry. Well, you can still say it and she can Absolutely. still hear you. And, yes. And to build a relationship up and try this practice and be open to it, you just never know. You could have the best relationship of your life with somebody who's you can't see in the physical. Yeah, and sometimes you can have a you know, a really loving relationship with somebody who is really awful on earth, because if you're willing, I mean, they, they they see what they've done. There is a life review. You do get to not only see the way you affected others and how your choices affected you, but you get to feel it. So for those of you who have had people die where you're really conflicted because they were mean and nasty, they know. You know, they know they hurt you. They They've not only seen it, but they've felt it. And that's just part of the way we learn after death is we get to experience, you know, in a sense, um, viscerally, the results of our choices. And it's not a punishment, it's just an awareness. Yes. And we get to grow from it. We really Yeah, we grow see. from it. So, and, and you know what I tell people? It's not horrible because, you know, if you're on earth and you accidentally say something that hurts a friend's feelings, you know it, you feel bad about it, you make it better and you're done. Mm-hmm. And they have the same desire to make it better, if possible, in heaven, if they've, you know, been upsetting or if they've been mean. Mm. All this you know, all for example, good. I've seen spouses die that were not the nicest spouses, mm-hmm. and I've seen them bring the most loving people into the lives of their, you know, person on earth. 
within a few years, you know, so that the person on earth who had the mean spouse who died suddenly is, you know, a few years later with somebody who treats them just beautifully. Yeah. And so you they want to make up for it. Just a few questions for you. Time goes by so fast. We've got plenty of time left, but there's a lot uh-huh. that you're uh, you're up to. Um, you do currently do medium readings. If somebody should hear this and want to reach out to you, I do. The wait list has been running over a year oh, right now, but I, yes. but I do have awesome referrals. Am I allowed to mention a few on air? Yeah, you sure can. And okay. even yeah, we can even include well, some in the, the description the one, the, of this episode for people. Yep. Okay. Well, one really good referral um, is actually a guy whose wife dragged him to one of my classes years ago. Uh-huh. And he ended up stealing the show. He's a natural medium, and he didn't know it. And his name is Steve Godfrey. His website is Believe with Steve Godfrey. dot com. Okay. And um, he's very good, and he's very evidential, even more than me. I mean, it's it, he gets consistently gets details. Great. And it was it was hilarious when he started because he went to my class, and he, he <laughs> I would get calls <laughs> from him. And what'd you do to me? What'd you do to me? I went to I went to my hairdresser, and some lady started talking in my head and told me she had a, t- a tattoo. And I asked her about it. She had a tattoo. <laughs> so, and you know, he he was he kept calling me when he was new, saying, "Is this normal?" And I said, "No, you're gifted." You know, so we had a lot of humorous conversations. Oh, that's great! So you teach mediumship. Um, Is that one I, of the things? Or? I I have done that in the past, but okay. it really. I, I teach classes called Dancing with Angels, and the same concepts apply whether you're working with angels or deceased relatives. It really is all about sitting and receiving and starting okay. to trust the thoughts and the feelings and the words and the pictures. And, um, you know, I've got CDs and stuff, but it, it, it really is all about trusting those little subtle signals that you get. Yeah. The reason I'm asking this is because I know we, we don't talk too much about angels, and I want to get into that some. Mm-hmm. Um because, you know, the name of the show is We Don't Die, and we do talk about a lot well, afterlife, near-death experiences, all kinds of things. But only a couple times have we touched on this uh, angelic realm, and even all the things I've studied, you know, I don't live my life thinking that there's angels around. So would you talk a little bit about who the angels are and how yeah, we can... Yeah, well, they're, they're in these other non, you know, realms we can't see or most of us can't see. And they're beings that really never lost their connection with the Creator and with the pure love that's available to us. And so they're here to help us when we're on Earth. They help us with everything. You know, I joke that you can ask your angels for help with parking spaces to life purpose. (laughs) And again, you don't have to know their name. You don't have to believe in them. You just give it a try. You know, okay, angels, if you're out there. And you just keep it up consistently until you start seeing results. You know, I had one lady do the same technique of just sitting and asking her angels, you know, instead of her relative, it was her angels, to please make their presence known to her. Mm-hmm. And just a few minutes at a time, nothing, 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 nothing. You know, she didn't get anything in the class, and I said, just keep it up. Two weeks later, I get a call. I love this woman. She's from New York. She goes, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I had a vision. My angel came. She showed me this. She showed me that. And, I mean, she had more vivid experiences sooner than I ever did. So, I, I you know, it made me laugh because she had been so impatient and she got it within two weeks. Fabulous. And they, they are also there after we die. And they will help us um, integrate the experience. You know, some people go into the light, meet up with their loved ones, and they're just fine with it. Other people, it's a shock to their belief systems, perhaps. Yes. You know, maybe they were expecting punishment or purgatory or something, and instead they're in this glorious reality and they feel wonderful, and it, it can be uh, overwhelming. You know, it, you ever had someone give you so much love or a surprise party or a present or something that's just overwhelming? Mm-hmm. You know, times that by a billion, and, and that's heaven. So to some it's very overwhelming, and the angels are there to help them. You know, maybe they've been mean, nasty, and cantankerous and victimized before they died, and then all of a sudden they're receiving this unconditional love and that can be overwhelming, you know, but I was mean. How can I have this love? And the angels sit there and they help them gently go over their lives and make peace. And they're, they're really there to help remind us that we're loved all the time, no matter what. We're loved. You know, the, the, one of the things this job has done for me is really help me understand how deeply and constantly we're loved, whether we love ourselves or not. That's beautiful. You know, the, the creator and the angels and most of your relatives in heaven are just constantly sending you love. Now, when I say most, 
every now and then I talk to a relative in heaven that says, yeah, I love you and I check in on you, but man, I'm having fun up here. <laughs> Especially young people. Had, you know, for example, I, I talked to a lot of, sadly, you know, young people, like in their 20s or teens that died. And they often are quite adventurous on the other side. They're making friends. They, you know, go exploring in the cosmos. And it doesn't mean they leave their family. It, it just means, you know, like any kid, well, I'll be home for dinner. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll be, I'll be home part of the time, but, you know, I, I like my adventures. So we have so much love that we're being sent constantly. So I tell people, if you don't believe it, just test it out. Ask for help, but keep an open mind because if you sit there and go, well, nobody loves me and nobody's listening, the universe has a, a kind of a, it's, it's like a law of metaphysics because physics doesn't understand it yet, but it's a law of energy. And if you put out a signal to the universe that says nobody's going to help me, then even though the angels want to, they have to honor your decision saying nobody wants to help me. And that's a tough one because, wait a minute, I'm asking for help, but nobody wants to help me. Well, that's like praying and then saying I take it back. Yes. You know, one, one minute you're saying I want help, the next minute you're saying nobody's going to do it, and the universe goes, okay, she wants help, okay, nobody's going to do it. And it, it's like a computer that you've punched two conflicting commands into. And the angels can only honor our vibrational reality. They, they, can't, they can't just pick and choose what they honor. They're, they're by their very nature responsive to our energy. So... So you have to be careful that if you're asking for help from the angels, you have to have a little tiny bit of room for believing that they might be there. You know, even if you're just saying, well, I'm testing you, I don't know, but I'm open. Mm -hmm. That speaks volumes. And I think, you know, if somebody had mentioned something about prayer, you know, there's a difference between prayer that's just word spoken, like I went to Catholic school as well and memorized all of them and don't even know what they mean. You know, or right. saying a real prayer that might not even consist of words, but it's got the energetic mm-hmm. feeling of prayer. Two different things. Very much so, because it's your energy field really that emanates into the universe as much as, um, you know, you would ripple in a pond. And it's your energy field that angels can respond to by their nature. They're not humans. They don't have an ego that says, well, I like you or I don't like you or you did that right or you did that wrong. They're not designed that way. They're energetic beings designed to respond to any loving ripples we put out. So, you know, if we put out a ripple that says, I want help, they'll try to respond to it. But if we're negating that in the very next moment with, yeah, but nobody's there, oh. that, weak, that weakens the prayer. It weakens yeah, it. Yeah, sure it does. But you know what? Now it, your deceased relatives are still going to try because they're still human. Yes. You know, they're still like human-minded. Yeah. I just thought, got this image of a dog and an angel, you know, that, <laughs> like we had a golden retriever growing up. And she was just that unconditional all the time, unconditional yeah. love. And just to know that we have these beings that surround us, whether we acknowledge them or not, that they're there. And, and that, yeah, that and a dog is, is actually a perfect example because you say to a dog, you know, a, a dog you've trained, come here, they come here. You say, go away, they go away. Mm. You know, and, and it, they are very unconditionally loving and allowing and very much uh, very similar to angels in that respect. They don't go away because they, 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 they don't, don't like you or they're afraid of you. They go away because you said so. Your energy's shoving them away. Interesting. And they just honor it. They honor it. You know, there were a few times I lost patience with my dog. I think we've all done it no matter how much we love them. And later I'd go and apologize I'm sorry I didn't mean to yell at you and he'd look at me like don't worry I just thought you were in a weird mood and I just you know you didn't want me around so I just I just went to the other room no big deal you know didn't get upset about it at all they're just they're just allowing and the universe and the angels are allowing now your deceased relatives they're going to try to help you no matter what you know they they don't have to allow <laughs> you know things right quite the same way the more evolved beings do it sounds weird, but, you know, for example, if, if you're in a real submit and you're pushing everyone away, your your grandma in heaven might still say, honey, come on, come on, let me get to you. Yes. Sweet. I love this conversation, Anne, because it's the first, I think, that I'm really seeing that we have to be on the court to give in order to receive, you know, to be open and allow in order to yeah. get communication. Well, yeah, to give feedback, to set a time, to, you know, they always say if you want to feel love, give love, right? So if you want to um, feel your angels or your loved ones, 
you know, take some time, make the practice, give the feedback. Like, I just love that we can be proactive in this as opposed to just sitting around waiting for, you know, this mighty vision. (laughs) Ta-da! The thing is, I think think there's been a misunderstanding throughout the ages that when people die, it ceases to be a relationship. And they're just somewhere where they have to, you know, give and know everything. And and the truth is, we're still in relationship with them. And and that means we have to relate. We have to, you know, take time to have a conversation or an energetic conversation where you just sit there and give feedback, for example. It's a relationship. You want to continue the relationship with your loved ones. You don't want to just say, okay, you're dead, the relationship's over, and now maybe I hope you'll, you know, give me a sign from on high. Yeah. You know, you, you just want to keep relating to them. And if, if you just persist, you can actually develop such a loving relationship. Shall I tell the story about when you wrote me and the funny timing? Yes. Okay, this is hilarious. This is the way the universe works. I have saved up for 10 years, and then I was given a gift. Finally, I was able to remodel my very old bathroom, so I was very happy about it. But long story short, I had to get these very large mirrors off the wall. The contractor couldn't get them off, and I needed them off the following day so other delivery people could come. They're about six feet long and about 40 inches wide. Now, that's bigger than me because I'm 5'2". So I shut my eyes, and, and I have two favorite carpenters in heaven, Jesus and my dead grandpa, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I said to my grandpa, I said, do you think we can do this? He's like, okay, yes, and he starts giving me step-by-step instructions because I've talked to him long enough that I, I hear the thoughts in my head very clearly, and he's telling me to put on my hiking boots because I'm going to have to hold them with my feet and wear a jacket in case you screw up and tape them, and, you know, he guides me through the whole thing down to putting cloths on top of the vanity and getting two ladders set up so that I can, you know, kind of maneuver the mirror down, you know, once I got it off, and where to remove the caulk. So here I am, this little short chick, taking these huge mirrors down, and I got them both down without any incident whatsoever. And I felt loved the whole time. I felt his warmth with me. And I was sitting there basking in kind of a sense of pride, honestly, because I'm like, I did it, you know. <laughs> and ding, your assistant's email comes in saying, you know, we'd like to have you on this show called We Don't Die, and we'd love some sort of story that's, you know, really concrete about how spirit helps you. And mm-hmm. I just started laughing perfect. at the timing. It was perfect. It was hilarious. But that's the kind of relationship you can develop with your loved ones. Now, that took me time. He died, oh, my God, it's probably been nearly 20 years ago. So we've been working at this over the years. But, it, you know, you can you can continue your relationship with your loved ones. You don't have to worry about where they are. You just have to practice. Oh, I love it. And that's so, I can't help but think how healing that would be for us as well. Oh, it's so healing. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just, I've had so many clients who, you know, I've, I beg them to do this, and and then I'll get the email sooner or later. You know, it may be months, it may be a year later. Guess what? (laughs) You know? Yeah. Guess what? I I have another fun story about that, and it's sadly not fun. A mother lost her her son to suicide. He was a young man, and he had gotten involved in drugs. Mm -hmm. And so over time, we worked with her, and she started getting funny little things happening. She would sit with him. Now, in her case, she never felt him. She was in such deep grief. She just never felt him. But her willingness to sit with him and invite him into her life started opening the door for him to do things in her life, send people to her just when she was in need, etc. So she and her husband go to Vegas for a weekend, one, one weekend, and she, she, in the previous reading, she had said, tell my son, I need a car. I don't know how I need a car, though. So they go to Vegas, and there's a contest where you can pick something out of a pile and win a car. So she goes to pick, I think it was purses, I don't know, something weird. She goes to pick a purse out of the pile, and her husband said, wait a minute, I don't know why, I just got this feeling coming over me, we should pick that one. Uh So she put hers down, he picks that one up. Bottom line is they won two cars in that contest. Two cars. Two cars, yes, because their son and spirit somehow got through to the dad, not the mother who was you know, still having a a hard time, got through to the dad to pick the winning purse. (laughs) Now, I joke with them. I'm like, well, why can't you do that for me occasionally, you know? <laughs> but if that's not evidence, I mean, come that's, on. Oh, my God. And she had just, just asked for a car. And I said, well, tell him you want a car, and he'll find some way to help you get a car, whether it's financing or friends or whatever, you know? That's really a beautiful and it wasn't, story. And it wasn't immediate, so sometimes it's not immediate. Mm-hmm. But you can trust that, you know, just just keep it up. And that, that was beautiful. Mm. And we just have a little over 10 minutes left. I'd love to find out more about like i've been to your website and you got lots there 
but if we just got a little taste of Ann Albers now and we want to know more and learn more, like how would we navigate your website and, 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 you know, like I want to stay connected okay. with you. <laughs> and well, it's I just like, you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like, okay, what else? Cause even just what we've spoken about just now, I mean, it's really been helpful. And what well, do you offer um, and how, how can we, yeah, but okay. best get more of you. Okay. Well, my website is visionsofheaven.com. And for those of you who want to look at it on cell phones, I am updating it next year. <laughs> it's going to be all modern. It's not yet. Um, I offer a free weekly message from Anne and the Angels where I channel an angel message and I give tips as to how to apply that practically in my own life. Um, people say it helps keep them on track, you know, and happier. I have an internet uh, video on demand show that I created that has um, seven different series in it. Each one is 12 episodes long. And the very first one is uh, how to get to live in partnership with your angels. And the practices for angels also apply to your deceased loved ones. So that's available as video on demand, and there's information on my website. I don't specifically say that it's also for getting in touch with loved ones, but I can just say that on air. It mm-hmm. really is. It's yes. the same principles. Okay. Um, I have CDs. I do have a couple of CDs specifically for people in grief. One is called Life After Death. One is called Death Demystified. And they're, you know, they're available as download, too, because they help people um, who are really, really raw and grieving understand the other side a little better, understand some very rudimentary meditations to, to connect with your loved ones. Even those easy meditations have worked. One lady wrote me that she suddenly had a vision of her daughter and had a conversation with her. So that was better than I had expected. Um, I've got downloads with the angel class on it as well if you don't like video. So just so many different things. You can always write me via my website, um, and I can guide you as to what might help you the best. What is the gaze that you talk about? Oh, gazing, yes. Um, I stood in front of a gentleman from Croatia years ago named Bratso, uh, and he has a gift of channeling spirit through his eyes. And people all over the world heal from fatal diseases in front of this man. And I, my clients had been telling me about him. He happened to be in the U.S. four years ago, so I went. And I saw white light emanating from him. And it touched me, and I lit up. And then it touched people in the room, and they lit up. And I had never seen that with my eyes open. And it felt wonderful. So I went home, and I discovered that period pains that I'd had for 40 years had just disappeared and never came back, ever. And I thought that was cool, of course, so I started watching him on the live streams. Uh, It's B-R-A-C-O is his name. And it started happening through me. And I don't have quite the same, you know, degree of miracles that he's had by any means, but people have had migraines and sciatica and pneumonia, and things just go away. I stand in surrender to spirit. Um, And when people connect through the eyes, I do it via free live streams on Facebook periodically. I haven't done it for a while, but I'm going to resume in the new year. It's free. There's no registration. Um, People report peace, or sometimes they see their loved ones, or sometimes they get a healing, or sometimes they just feel better. And it really is just allowing spirit to come through. And then people are just looking into your eyes. Yeah. You're not talking? really... Not talking. Mm. When, well, I give a little chat beforehand that's something useful because I like to, you know, just share a little thought that helps people, a little 10-minute chat. But what happens is we are all connected at, in, in the same way waves are connected through the, through the, you know, the magnitude of the ocean. We yeah. are connected to one another in an energetic field. And the minute you actually focus on someone, whether it's looking in their eyes or thinking about them, you're beginning to tune into them. It's very much like the minute you, you know, dial in a person's phone number on your phone, you're starting to make that connection. Well, the minute you think of someone, the minute you look into the eyes, you know, the eyes are the windows of the soul. The minute you connect, you're starting to feel whatever space they're in. You're starting to connect with that. And so when I stand and surrender to spirit and people look in the eyes, they're basically dialing into that energy and they start to experience it themselves often. And it um, it isn't anything I thought I'd ever do when I grew up. <laughs> no, I didn't think I'd be doing this when I grew up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you I'm know, sure you they're, too. they're just things that you get guided to do that are uh, better than you would have asked for. Hmm. Are your parents still alive? Yes, On they planet? are. Um, uh-huh, they're still here, and um, 
I, I have four grandparents in heaven and a bunch of folks I know over the years, but I'm blessed with two parents on earth still. And your, your physics dad? Uh, how does oh, he relate still to still traveling and lecturing and, and yeah, well, here's the funny part. I prayed for years. I'm like, God, please find us a bridge, you know? Yes, so we can of course. Talk to each other. And lo and behold, he's now teaching quantum physics at George Washington University in DC. Mm-hmm. And quantum physics and mysticism are not that far apart because there's a belief in an infinite realm of possibility. And quantum physics says what you focus on is what you witness. That's scientific. You know, they've, They've done experiments where it's called the observer effect, Mm -hmm. where they see the electron where they expect it to be. That's mind-blowing. I've seen videos on this. Mind-blowing. Yeah. Oh, Science is starting to prove in very rudimentary levels that what we focus on is what we're going to experience. So, for example, if we focus on our loved ones being completely gone, even though they could be right there with you, you're going to have the experience of them being completely gone. If you focus on the, the even a possibility, well, maybe they're here, and you open the door. Well, what's happening is you're opening the door, and they're focused on, I'm going to get through. So you're not blocking them. So we start to experience that. And science is starting to do that. And so now my dad and I have great discussions. I love that. There's something that I read once, and I don't really remember what the terminology is, but if you're going on a trip to Hawaii, you start seeing Hawaiian shirts everywhere. Or if you're yeah. going to buy a new SUV, whatever, uh, and all of a sudden they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Now, not necessarily does it mean that you created them, but you're picking up on it. So why not focus on the you know these relationships that we're building with the angels and our loved ones, and then all of a sudden we'll start picking up on those signs, right? Simple as that. Well, it's absolutely true because they're always there. You know, those license plates weren't manifested by my dog. You know, the, the, the cars actually existed. <laughs> That's but funny. in a sea of traffic, they drew my attention to it, and they inspired me to leave the house at exactly the right time. You know, so so those things, you're right. The signs are there. They're, they exist, but we are open to being guided to see them and notice them and experience them. Now, every now and then... You know, there's a loved one in spirit that just goes above and beyond. I had one that would turn on my shower, you know, occasionally. Mm, If I started thinking something negative, they'd turn on the shower, kind of like a sign, clean it up. And I'd say, okay, honey, got it. Don't waste water. And then the shower would turn off. (laughs) Oh, crazy. A little crazy. Yeah, that's unusual, but it can happen. Oh, terrific. And so if you wouldn't mind asking your angels at this point we've got about five minutes left is there anything else you'd like to share you think needs to be shared or uh, we need to hear and just like the floor is yours for whatever it is that's in in your heart or your angels heart okay well what they're saying in my mind is we're talking about the hope and the relationship and and they of course want people to develop those with their loved ones because when you develop a relationship with your loved ones in heaven you start feeling more of the love that is there for all of us, but that you can't help but feel in heaven. So over time, it actually dramatically improves the quality of your life because suddenly you're you're focusing on this reality that your loved one is in that's profoundly loving and helpful. However, that said, you're going to grieve. You know, I don't I don't think it's it's realistic to ask people to be inhuman. So ride the waves. You know, I I tell people grief is is like an ocean wave. It will pull you under and you think you're going to drown and then it just tosses you up. So the the trick is when you're grieving, don't fight it. You know, when the tears come, I tell people, grab a towel. Forget the Kleenex. You know, you're going to buy boxes. Just get a towel and sob your heart out without making it wrong. Yes. Just sob your heart out. Just, Just think of it as, okay, this is just liquid love. It's pouring out of me. And you'll, you'll sob and you'll sob and then all of a sudden it will just stop and you'll be fine for a while. And then something will remind you of them and then in you go. But if you just let these natural waves kind of carry you and you, you don't, don't make them wrong and you just ride the wave, so to speak, then the grief won't kill you. Then when you're in a positive wave, you can sit there and connect with them. And the good waves will get much bigger and the bad waves will get much smaller over time. And there's a natural cycle. So one of the things the angels don't want people to do is to feel bad about the actual grieving. You know, yes, focus on as many good memories as you can. But when one of those, you know, undertoes gets you, just ride it out. 
because too many times I see people that come in my office and say, well, people think I should be over this by now. And I'm like, well, that's, that's unkind. That's unkind. You know, we have to be kind to ourselves in the grieving process. And our loved ones, they're happy and they want us to know they're there and they want to bring us that joy. But they also know there are times when we're just going to cry. And they and and so it's a balance. You, you see what I'm saying? It's there are just times when you, you they you know when it's just there and you can't fight it. Just ride the waves, the angels say. But the sooner you get you know into that, or as soon as you get into a more positive space, then then that's the time to sit and connect because then you'll have more and more loving experiences. Beautiful. So they don't want to short circuit anyone's you know grief by telling them to get in their head and say you shouldn't grieve. You know, of course you're going to grieve. Or human. Yeah. And to give yourself compassion as you go through it and to ask others around you if they're going to be around you to just give you compassion, to be kind to yourself will actually help you get in touch with your loved ones quicker because self-love is a loving vibration and sometimes that's the best we can do. You know, sometimes you're mad and you're sad and you're grieving and the best thing you can do is comfort yourself. But in that act of loving yourself, that's a loving vibration that will actually help them make contact with you. Mm. Like it. So these are these are more subtle areas, but but it it helps people because sometimes people come in and say, "Well, I'm never going to make contact because I can't can't stop crying." And the angels say, "Well, cry then, cry it out until the natural cycle tosses you back up on the shore again." Yeah. And do you have a book also? Oh uh, yeah, I've got a few. I've got uh, one called Whispers of the Spirit, which documents my journey from being an angry, cranky <laughs> young lady in engineering, you know, into being guided by spirit into this reality. And uh, I got another one called Love is the River, learning to live in the flow of divine grace, because I like to teach people that there is a power in the universe that does guide us and love us. And then I have one more called Bridging the Gap Between Christianity and Mysticism, because you know, as we know, I grew up Catholic and. I no longer think that conflicts with my more mystical beliefs. And I, I've written a book to help people with that because there's a lot of people that, you know, still have a traditional religious foundation, but they've had experiences and they're trying to, you know, reconcile that. Yes. So it's not geared specifically towards experiences with the other side, but just, you know, how do we bridge our, our reality and our understanding that, you know, there's a lot more out there, but, you know, maybe you believe in Jesus, and then how do you reconcile that? So that that's why I did that one. Yeah, it can be scary for people. I mean, even me, I was so afraid when my book first got published. How do I tell people about this? They're going to think I'm crazy. You know, we all have this fear of what will people think. And so even to be able to talk about our spirituality and, uh, you know, listening to the show or getting your book or, you know, whatever it may be, it really takes, like, courage and, you know, we have fear. So I like that there's a, you're bridging a gap, even though it's between, you know, religion and spirituality. But I think that some of those things need to be heard. And then I don't know if you feel the same way, but more people than not are actually open to this. Uh, oh, and, yeah. And it's really interesting because I... People, I thought everybody's going to think I'm a lunatic, whereas just the opposite. <laughs> People are like, oh, if you believe in it, let me tell you about these weird things that have happened to me. I mean, that's 99% of the feedback. Every so often mm-hmm. I get somebody who says, I'm going to pray for you. You're doing the devil's work, you know. But I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah, okay. No, no, thank you. Because um, I think we all know yeah. in our heart this is this is okay. We're not doing anything well, yeah. there. I'm never going to turn away prayers, even if they're because people think I'm misguided. It's like, yes, pray for me. Thank you. I'll you know? take it. It's good. <laughs> yeah, <I'll take> it. <laughs> well, Anne, once again, tell us your website. Okay, visionsofheaven.com. That is so easy to remember, and you're Anne Albers. I thank you so much for being our guest here today. Thank you so much for having me. I, I just love that you're getting the word out to people because, you know, I deal with people grieving every day, and you yes. just want to hug them and embrace them and hold them until, until they can feel the touch of spirit themselves. And, you know, if... if if you're willing to do it, then I always tell people, just give it a try and persist. And, you know, you might end up as weird as Sandra and I. <laughs> yeah, know. but we're fun people. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, we're fun. Yeah. Yes. In, in fact, uh, just an announcement to the listeners. Um, September 14th through 16th in Scottsdale, Arizona, we're having another afterlife symposium, which is a whole bunch of experts in, in the world of the afterlife and afterlife communication. And I want to invite anyone to, to join us there, afterlifesymposium.org. You can find out more and register. But why this pertains to this conversation is I met, Anne, so many like-minded people 
all under one roof. There were over 500 of us. And I thought, these are my best friends for life because we talk the same language, you know. So I, I encourage people to build friendships with those of us that speak this lingo. And, um, and yeah, and it's great. And I, just, I just found out I'll be speaking at it. Yay! Hallelujah. Yeah, I just found out a few days ago and we finalized it so yes I so we wait. get to it's meet in person group. yeah Yay. that's great <laughs> also for my listeners um my book we don't die just came out an audio book it's on audible and amazon yeah it's been a project for years and i finally got it done and the wonderful dr bernie siegel uh, wrote the foreword and he actually reads it and it's pretty magical so if you're interested in that you can find that on amazon just type in we don't die sandra champlain and then lastly our home base for all these shows is we don't die radio.com all the past episodes you can find there and it is the holiday season and it can be a tough time and really truly i believe sometimes it's not good to be in your own head we can have feelings of guilt and dread and you know sometimes just hearing a christmas carol takes me back to years when the family was together and times were good and and so if you it just it's a it's a tool for you if you want to listen to any of these shows or read a book or anything just to get your mind into the positive as opposed to the past and what would have happen so we don't die radio.com lots of past episodes and i also have a very healing audio called how to survive grief that's free my 19 reasons to believe in the afterlife that's free and um i wrote you know it says you'll receive a few chapters of my book we don't die but our secret it's the whole book if you need it it's there for you there's a lot of really great tools in there so in closing uh, we have been speaking to ann albers the fantastic beautiful fun uh very informative lady i love this visions of heaven.com is her website my name is sandra champlain and i'm so happy that I get to bring you these episodes of We Don't Die Radio. You have no idea how much I love this as much as you do because every episode I get so much value for my life and I trust when I get value, you get value. So I love it and I love sharing. But I do believe that our life is an education for the soul and that our lives here really are important. So let's take some of the tools that Anne has given us. And I, you know, my favorite one that I'm taking out is uh, taking forward i guess is is to build these relationships with our loved ones and uh, be open they're there they're around you set a time a date and and make it happen and be open and give them feedback so a warm again uh, thank you to Anne. so i really want to thank you for listening and know that you have loved ones that are here on this planet i love you you have lots of love around and then you've got a lot of invisible love so talk to them they are there your angels and your loved ones so i want to say thank you for listening and we'll see you soon